It's July 1909. The summer sun is hot, the air humid, the atmosphere stifling. Even shade and an ice drink bring no more than a little relief from the heat. But then, with a touch of a button, a cool and powerful breeze appears, emanating from the electric fan, a miracle of electricity that places the wind at your command. The electric fan soon passed from luxury to necessity and brought cool breezes and new comforts, as well as new dangers, to homes and businesses across the country. Hi everyone and welcome to The Vintage Company. I'm Julie and I'm a business historian. And today I'm looking at the history of electric fans and an interesting development that promised to make fan blades danger proof. Early mentions of electric fans in the 1880s described an extraordinary invention, capable of lowering the temperature in a room from 95 to 60 degrees in mere minutes. And though many may have dreamed of having such a wonderful cooling device in their own homes, electric fans were initially extremely expensive. Some wealthier families might have owned one, but you would be more likely to encounter a fan in offices, shops, department stores, and theaters. If you look at electric fans made from the 1890s through the 1920s, you might notice that they're actually quite beautiful. Because electric fans were displayed prominently in homes and businesses, manufacturers gave them elaborately decorated designs. What they weren't, however, were particularly safe. Aside from the usual risk of shock and electrocution that accompanied early electric devices, Electric fans had exposed brass blades, which proved hazardous for careless or curious fingers. Newspapers from the time are full of gruesome stories detailing how digits were injured or lost to a fan's blades. I won't go into too much detail, but headlines like fingers chewed in electric fan and split hand in electric fan were common. Now manufacturers soon added metal cages around the rotating blades. But even so, small hands could still fit in between the metal bars of the cages, leading to injured fingers and hands. Luckily, in the 1930s, an appliance company named Samson United Corporation had the solution. A danger-proof electric fan with four blades made of rubber instead of metal. The company told consumers, The electric fan has been revolutionized. No longer need you or your family daily face the dangers of whirling metal blades. No longer need your home or office be ruined by fan cages. For now, an entirely new kind of electric fan is at your dealers. A fan with soft, flexible rubber blades, so pliable that at full speed they can't hurt the fingers of the tiniest tot. A fan so harmless that it needs no cage around it. Called the SafeFlex, this line of electric fans included a standard 8-inch model, a 6-inch portable model, a 10-inch oscillating fan, and even an auto fan for your car. The SafeFlex fan received a patent in 1937, but was it actually as danger-proof as advertised? Only one way to find out. The SafeFlex fan is most likely from the late 1940s to early 1950s. The blades are made of a pretty soft, pliable rubber. The blades are overlapping, which was a design improvement first made by General Electric to make electric fans quieter. Samson United advertised its SafeFlex fans as noiseless, with a hardly audible pleasant purr. So let's see what it actually sounds like. It's actually quieter than I thought it would be. Not quite as quiet as a modern fan, but not loud either. And it produces a pretty good breeze. Now let's see what happens if I touch the blades while they're rotating. I'm not necessarily nervous to do this because conceptually this seems like it should work. So here it goes.
That was actually a really weird sensation. It didn't necessarily hurt, but there was, of course, a lot of resistance from the fan blades hitting my finger, so it wasn't completely painless either. But all parts of my fingers are still intact, so it seems that SafeFlex worked exactly as advertised. Now, it's hard to say if the SafeFlex fan was a successful product, because ultimately the company that made it was not. Less than 20 years after the SafeFlex fan was introduced, Samsung United was unable to pay its creditors and was declared insolvent. Samsung United actually has an interesting history in and of itself. Founded in 1929, the company originally made small appliances like toasters and of course fans. But they also contracted out their manufacturing operations, producing airplane turrets during World War II and the first Polaroid instant camera in the late 1940s. But the company was struggling. In 1949, the company's losses totaled $1,174,616, more than $13 million today. And as things turned from bad to worse, production was halted in 1950. The company's employees dwindled from a peak of 1,500 to just 25. And in 1953, the company's assets were turned over to creditors, marking the end of Samsung United. Electric fans too have seen a decline in the United States since their heyday from the 1900s to the 1920s. The rise and increasing prevalence of central air reduced the overall demand for portable window and ceiling fans. But the electric fan still has its fans, especially in conjunction with air conditioning. Electric fans use 20 times less energy than air conditioning, reducing cost and overall environmental impact. And according to the Department of Energy, using a ceiling fan along with your air conditioning can allow you to raise the thermostat setting about 4 degrees Fahrenheit without making you uncomfortable. Just in general, ceiling fans are particularly useful, circulating the air to keep you cool in the summer and bringing warmer air down from the ceiling in the winter. Today, 87% of homes in the United States use electric fans, and fans are equally popular in homes with or without air conditioning alike. And although electric fans are not as popular as they once were, they continue to bring cool breezes and comfort as they did more than 100 years ago. Thank you so much for watching! If you like this video and you want to learn more about vintage objects and the stories behind them, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to this channel. Thank you again, and I hope to see you next time.